Welcome back to the Hurry Up Offense. Fantasy football news and advice in about, what, 15? I'll go for 10. Maybe it'll be a little longer. News and advice for week 11. Wow, it's already week 11 of the 2022 NFL fantasy football season. I am Smokey Ramirez, your fantasy football pro. Let's go. Today's topic is all about more trends, deeper trends. I gave you some surface level trends last week. We're going to go deeper and try to find that edge over your league mates this week right here, right now. But first, let's get into the news. Out of the Jets camp, Corey Davis is still not practicing on Wednesday. Now, Robert Sala said before the bye that this would probably be the week that Corey Davis comes back, but he is not practicing right now, so it is not looking good. This is actually one of the trends we're going to talk about later. But if you're in a deep league and you were hoping Corey Davis was coming back, yeah, probably not. So have another option in mind. Well, let's just keep it green right now and talk about a little bit of Eagles news. A.J. Brown was limited Wednesday at practice. Now, he tweaked that ankle Monday night in the game. Uh, I think he's going to be okay. I really do. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal right now. I mean, he is practicing, albeit in a limited form. So, there's that. I, I don't think we're in any fear of missing Brown this week. It is possible if it takes a turn for the worse but right now we're looking okay and then devonta smith just throw that on there he has the knee issue and he is also limited but i think we're headed in the right direction keep an eye on it though hey let's head on down to texas and talk about brandon cooks imagine that he's sitting out on wednesday i think he's sat out almost every wednesday this season it seems brandon cooks does not want to be here now I think it's a volatile situation. If you have him, I would be trying to unload him at all costs at this point. You never know when this thing is going to hit the roof. If Brandon Cooks is out there on the field, he's going to get you something. It's not going to be an explosive, say, an A.J. Brown type week or Justin Jefferson type week. But he is a solid player who will get you something. But like I said, this is such a volatile situation. And you never know when it's going to completely implode. And Brandon Cooks could be out for the rest of the season. So if you can get rid of him and get something in return, I would. I definitely would. J.D. McKissick is still out on Wednesday, so it's not looking good for him to return this week. It's good for Brian Robinson if you're playing him, and also Antonio Gibson. Those two guys are going to be in a split backfield. I think we're stuck with that for the rest of the season, but they have been productive lately. So, they're out there. Get you some points out of them, because I think they're both going to be quite solid. Not weak winners, but they're going to get you some points. And... There's probably going to be many games where they both score a touchdown in the same game. That's the nature of this team right now. Out of the Browns cam, David Njoku is still not practicing. And that's just what it is. If you're in tight end hell, you've probably held Njoku on the IR. Because he is valuable when he's on the field with Jacoby Brissett. I don't know if that's going to continue when Watson gets out there, but the tight end landscape is so bad. And that's another trend we're going to talk about later, by the way. It is so bad that you might just have to hold him. I don't know. It's just too tough. Like, what is on your waiver wire? If you're in a under 10 team league or 10 and under, you may have something to fill in with. I mean, I'm sure you've been plugging something in there, so... Who knows? Uh, maybe just hold him another week. Gus Edwards put in a limited practice. So I guess it looks like he may be on track to play this coming week against the Panthers. Which would be a prime spot if he is. But man, these ACL tears on running backs are proven to be really hard to come back from. ACL, MCL, whatever it is, you know. Achilles? Man, forget about it. Deontay Foreman has done okay, but who else has come back and actually played well? Speaking of that, for this backfield right here, this is a tough situation for these running backs. If he's not out there, play your Kenyon Drake. I don't expect 
any of these guys to last long with the trouble that they have had. I, I imagine we're just going to continue to see them come back in and go right back out. That's just how it feels out of Ravens camp with running backs. Keep an eye on this because tight end hell is tight end hell. Cole Komet was limited with a thigh issue that really kind of came up out of the blue here. Now, so far, there's no indication that he won't be ready to play the Falcons this week, which should be a prime spot for him to show out again. He is in the middle of his third, count it, one, two, three, third breakout season. It's his third season, and that's usually breakouts for tight ends. We'll talk about trends later. Cole Komet, keep an eye on him. Romeo Dubs is going to be out for week 11. Chase Young is expected to be back on the field if you want to get a little IDP action in there. Plug him on that DL. Oh, what? You want more IDP action? Minka Fitzpatrick looks like he's coming back this week. Plug him in there. Guess who you can't plug in one of your IDP slots? Leonard. Shaquille Leonard. Done for the season. It's over. DJ Chark is expected to come back for the Lions. He is at least designated to return off of IR. We'll see if he's ready to play this week. But he's out there. And actually, it looks like a good spot. Because that offense is firing. They had a few down games. But for the most part, this entire season, that offense has been running. Outside of, say, the Patriots game and whatnot. But... He may be useful. Keep an eye on him for a WR3 or a flex or something like that. Okay, I've got to run through this. KJ Hamler is going to be out for a few weeks. Uh, what do we got? Allen's still limited on Wednesday. We know the situation with Allen. Andrews is limited. Let's hope he can get back because of said tight end hell. Dalton will start week 11 as if we didn't know that. Jackson, Tyree Jackson is off the pup list tight end hell like i said what else do we got anything else i uh, godart is going to the ir tight end hell let's get into these trends that's it for the news this week the game theory portion of the show is all about trends i've been talking about it all episode and let's start with a tight end trend now this is tough because i've been talking about tight end hell this entire episode and a lot this entire season but the trend is a tight end can determine the success of your team now it's such a small spot because we tend to think about we have one tight end slot on the average fantasy football team we we only have one and the guys don't produce that much except for the elite tier the travis kelsey the mark andrews the the gronks of all the Zacherts, guys like that, you know, they, they've produced for us big time. But other than that, it's just a middling bunch of guys who you really don't know what to play. You could get a 20-point week. You could get a 3-point week. You could get Cole Komet in the first two weeks of the season. I believe it was two weeks. Zeros. Zeros. Now, he is on his breakout trajectory right now because he's in his third season. I knew it would come around at some point. That's part of this. Listen, don't undervalue or overvalue the tight end slot. Like I said, tight ends can make or break you, but it doesn't always. So we're not looking for first round tight ends as much as it sounds nice to have Travis Kelsey on your team or even Mark Andrews. We have to compare those to other first round wide receivers and running backs who happen to be just a little bit more valuable for your team in comparison to what you can get in later rounds. Hopefully, the ideal situation is to find that breakout tight end for this season. Typically, there's only one per season. That's just how it's worked recently. There can be more. I mean, you think about 20, what was it, 2017 with George Kittle, uh, 2018, Mark Andrews. Um, 2017, I believe it was. 20, 2016 with Zach Ertz. Yeah. Uh, typically, there's one each season. But there can be more, like I said. You just have to find them. And I think this year, this year, it's looking like Cole Komet could come through. I don't expect him to break right into that top tier like a Kittle did, like an Andrews did like a Ertz did, 
but it could happen. Last year was Dawson Knox. Look what Dawson Knox ended with last year. And people thought he was nothing, but he was a third-year tight end. And he hadn't performed up to that point, so people give up on tight ends. You have to wait three full seasons to really get a feel. Sometimes it's even four. Tight ends are just that finicky. But if you get one of these breakout guys, just hold him and have faith. Because most of the time, the third year tight end, the first round. Now, I'm talking about first rounders, sometimes second rounders. I'm talking about highly drafted tight ends. These guys come through in the end. They are given a chance. They are given three to four years to progress. And they will most likely come through. Hope that makes sense to you. Because of our news section, this trend right here really <laughs> is telling. Most valuable skill players are going to wait for a full recovery to come back to playing now you need to remember this if you're just sitting on the bench or you have them on ir most of the super valuable guys are going to wait and that's just it it's because they are so valuable that they're not going to lose their spot on the team they're going to hold on to that spot because they're highly drafted or they have proven themselves in the past. They don't have fear of losing their spot. They know how good they are. They can take extra time. Yes, I'll go ahead and say what you're all thinking. This trend tends to apply to wide receivers, right? Not so much quarterbacks. We've seen Stafford play through bad injuries just to get out there and play and hopefully get that team to a win. And coaches want their superstar quarterback out there. But wide receivers, you can tend to play without them and have a slight dip in production. It's not like a quarterback. Quarterbacks are going to want to be out there. Wide receivers, not so much. Running backs, even to a lesser degree. It's mostly wide receivers. Keep that in mind. If you got a star wide receiver, a highly drafted one, and he is out with an injury that should take, let's say, four weeks, don't expect it to automatically be the minimum. That's just how this trend goes. And since I am running out of time, I have to spit this one out real quick. It's a trend dealing more with the playing of fantasy football rather than the players in the actual NFL that you are using, you are utilizing their stats. Most league winners in fantasy football tend to get their information from multiple sources not just one single source let's say you only listen to the fantasy footballers that's only going to get you so far because they have their opinions and that's not going to always apply to your league every league is different in minute ways so one single source is not going to give you all the information you need to constantly win in your league Yes, they may tell you the right move. Those guys are good. They may tell you the right move here and there. They're not going to get it right always. Through surveys that have been done over several, several seasons, prove, the data proves, that most, most fantasy football league winners get their information from multiple sources. I'm not even talking about two sources. I'm talking four Five sources. A lot of people don't have time to listen to one podcast a day. And unfortunately, you're probably not going to win like that. You have to take the time. Like, even if you're not going to listen to podcasts, let's say you don't have three hours to devote to three separate podcasts each day. Let's say you got one hour a day. Try to mix it up throughout the week. Try to get in five different podcasts if you only have one hour a day. To listen to podcasts and then when you get home start analyzing these stats start looking at trends start looking at daily trends start looking at player trends that happen throughout the season put this information together along with the information you are using from these analysts can help make you a better player in the end you have to get information from multiple sources that's how you win 
at Fantasy Football. Guys, I am desperately out of time. We did go to 15 minutes. Dang it. Let me spit this out real quick. If you want to listen to Alex and I break down every single game every single week and predict the winners, that is the scoreboard. It is already out. It's up there on the channel right now it came out yesterday as you're listening to this if you're listening to it on the first day it don't really matter though it's up there go and check it out please subscribe to the beyond football channel give this video a like i could really use it please for god's sake give me a like i am Smokey ramirez your fantasy football pro i'll see you next week deuces